everybody, and welcome to a uh, video review for the Terrible Terror podcast. And, um, you know, uh, it's been just a actually shorter while than it normally is between video reviews, and there's going to be a couple more, I think, in the next couple of weeks that you'll be able to see on things. But this one uh, is special because this is a screener that I was offered by uh, Scott uh, Motzko, or Moti Motisco, I hate pronouncing people's names, and this is even worse because everything is going to be kind of in Spanish, and you think you'd look at me and you think, hey, this guy uh, knows his Spanish. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it's not always the case with everything. But uh, so he had emailed me and he'd ask uh, if I, I had an opportunity to do a screener uh, with a review and all that stuff. And so um, I said, you know what, after seeing the trailer for this, I'm like, yeah, this actually looks like this could be pretty fun. Uh, well, and that's going to be an understatement uh, with the whole thing. Uh, so the movie that was offered to me is The Coffee Table or La Mesita del Comidor. Comidor. Um, and it's a Spanish movie. It, it originally came out, so it came out in 2002, but it was screened in, um, oh God, why can't I remember the fucking festival? Uh, it's Fantastic Fest. Uh, But it was screened at Fantastic Fest in 2023 and is officially coming out uh, to theaters and VOD, I believe, April 19th. I think theaters, it's going to be on April 19th, and then I think it's going to be VOD shortly after, if not at the same time. I That I don't quite remember, uh, but I definitely know that it will be out in theaters. They'll have a, probably a small theatrical run on April 19th. So... Uh, what really interested me in the movie is just the the premise. They, and one of the things that they said about this movie, uh, it's a black comedy with horror elements. Um, and being that it's a black comedy, um, it's not a, a traditional black comedy in the way that, you know, it's really absurd, kind of like very bad things. If you've ever seen very bad things before, that to me is like a black comedy, right? It's still really funny, but everything's fucked up. I mean, when you accidentally kill a stripper and have to, you know, hide the evidence and then the chaos ensues at the same time, it's it's pretty funny, but really fucked up. Um, but this movie itself is it's interesting in the way that it presents itself. So uh, the the movie itself, you have, you know, the, the basic premise of the movie and I'm going to break this up into two parts. Um, I'm just going to do a straightforward review and then I want to do, uh, you know, there's going to be like a little break at one point. And uh, if I could put a chapter in at that point, if you want spoilers, you can have spoilers. Uh, otherwise I would stay away from after the rating for the movie and the generalized thing. And then once we get to the other part, we're going to do spoilers. I'm going to do spoilers. So if you really want to be spoiled with the film, then wait for that section of the video. So that way that you can kind of go through it because I, I, I'm going to say it up front, what actually happens can can be tough to deal with, but it's a big portion of the movie and what makes the movie so strong in its tension building and the way that it does everything. So there was a point in the movie where I audibly gasped and covered my mouth because I couldn't believe what was happening, uh, and that was towards the end of the film. Uh, so the basic synopsis is there's a couple at the beginning of the movie, and they're buying a table. Right, they're buying a coffee table, and it's really fucking gaudy. It is like it's two ladies that are on the side, and they're holding up the glass. And you know, it's they, it's not like it's artistic in the way that it's done, but it's like you know, if you're with your your significant other, right, and she's you know they're an older couple, and this is her first kid, uh, and his first kid as well, and it, it sounds like at least it was a a tough pregnancy, and especially since everybody kind of talks about it. You know, when they talk to her, especially at the beginning of the movie, I, I'm not going to, you know, this is not truly a spoiler, but they're like, oh, you should have one right away because if you get any older, it's not going to be very good for you. And she's running out of time. Basically what a neighbor says to her. Uh, and so they buy this coffee table and well, the husband buys the coffee table, you know, kind of in spite of the wife. And then like chaos ensues after something happens with the coffee table and the purchase of this coffee table really changes their lives and things keep going downhill from this like there's all these different connected pieces that finally connect at the end of the movie and one just 
kind of, like I said, jaw dropping scene that happens at the end of the movie. Uh, and it, you know, there's a meetup with his brother and his brother's really young girlfriend who happens to be 18. And I'm assuming these guys are in their forties or maybe the, the brother is the younger brother and he's maybe in his late thirties. Um, and then you have the upstairs neighbor who has a daughter who's infatuated with the husband and wants the husband to tell the wife that he's in love with her and he's going to run away with her. And there's some honestly pretty harsh language that goes on in between the two of them. Um, and, you know, and the husband kind of plays it off. So those three things all culminate together at the end of the movie in an oddly satisfying conclusion and it's hard to say that like why it's satisfying without going into spoilers for the movie the things that i really liked is that the tension in this movie is excellent i love movies that have tension it's not your traditional horror movie it is a psychological horror movie in the way that things move forward and the situation that they're put into and how that tension builds and there are times where the movie kind of holds on things for a little bit too long but the thing is is that that air of tension is always there and it's always like well how is this gonna like play itself out and it's shot extremely well uh, and i really like a lot of the scenes and again i'll be in the spoilers where i'll talk about them but there's some really great scenes where it does focus on things that are interesting now uh the good thing like, not the, i wouldn't say the good thing but what's nice about this movie is it does all of it, and it does feel like, again, when a movie feels a little long, it's it's not terrible. Uh, but when it's 90 minutes and you you feel like, oh, my God, this is much longer than it is, you know, sometimes that can be negative. But in here, I kind of feel like that was beneficial to it because a lot of times you'll sit in movies and you're like, oh, man, I wish they had more time to do this. I wish they had more time to do that. In here – Within that 90 minutes, there is a lot that gets done and maybe a little bit more than it needed to, but it seemed to fit perfectly within the runtime. Now, uh, this was directed by uh, Kaye Casas. Um, and if again, if I'm saying that name wrong, I am fucking terrible. I'm sorry. Um, and uh, it stars Estefania de los Santos and David Pereja, um, as well as Joseph Riera, Claudio Riera, and Eduardo Atunia. Um, it it, the movie itself, like I said, it's it's all just about the tension. And without getting to what happens in the first 15 minutes of the movie, and because it is a giant spoiler, when you watch the trailer, if you watch the trailer for this film, and you know I'm going to be showing pieces of the trailer, of course, while we're talking about this so that you can see little things, you kind of look at it and you're like, oh, it's what really interested me. Like, how did we get to this point? Why is she doing that? And this is all over a coffee table. Like, what could it possibly be? And it makes sense. But it's it's really important that you know why the coffee table is a part of the misery. And that is like the shocking thing in this movie. And so I think in general that maybe you could have toned down a couple of sections. Like, the violence, it's not, it's not terrible. And... When they do a reveal late in the movie, I'm glad that you don't get to see everything. But there are some things that it's just it's disturbing without being like gory and over the top. And there's one scene at the table that is extremely effective and feels like gore, but it's actually not in the way that it's done. Um, I I think all the actors and actresses in this movie do an excellent job. And again, since it's in Spanish, you know. The one thing is, is that I do understand some, right? I don't really speak it fluently, but I can understand what some people are saying. And so I can hear words and hear phrases and, and grasp them, you know. And that's just from hanging out with a lot of people and some parts of my family as well. But I'm not one that's just like, oh, I can instantly translate it and I can, you know, speak it out to people. But in the way they do, I, I especially uh, like Estefania de los Santos. I think she does, in, in my opinion, besides, of course, David Pareja. Um, I mean, I think she's kind of like the, start and whole, the heart and soul of the movie. But David is really, he, he's kind of ridiculous in the way that he, he, the way that he acts in this movie. He's, he plays Jesus um, and it's just having to see him go through the scenes that he goes through with being very vague. Uh, it's, it's done 
extremely well. I, I think both of them, and I, the dark comedy really comes, you know, that black comedy really comes from uh, Maria. Uh, it comes directly from that character because of what she doesn't know, right? And even that, I feel like, is giving away too much as you're watching or you're trying to figure out the movie. So uh, short uh, of it, I think that this film is extremely well shot. I think that you have really good characters. I think sometimes, even with the short runtime, it does get a little long in the teeth, but being long in the teeth doesn't necessarily hurt the film, and it really emphasizes certain parts of it. There's an uncomfortable laughter with everything that comes in because some of the things are just like, oh, I'm, you're laughing for the wrong reasons, and it's mainly because you're uncomfortable. The tension building in this film is really great because it's not necessarily... You know, it's in some of the shots, but it's mostly in the writing of the script and the way it's being played out on screen. And, you know, there's a lot of times where you get tension filled movies from, you know, directors or writers where they're good about creating the atmosphere and letting the atmosphere control the tension of the film. In this, it's an overlying issue that isn't resolved until the end of the movie. And it really, in you know, as much as like, you know, I, I again I have to like both of these characters like it's not like I'm being forced to like both of these characters I have to like both of these characters for different reasons and actually like thinking and talking out loud I think I like Jesus equally to Maria um and and it's because you know Maria like I said tends to be the comedy side because of what she's saying and compared to what's going on that she doesn't know and what Jesus knows to what's going on he's the dark and tragic side even though it's a tragedy for everybody in here so the, like I said that tension that builds and that just grows with everything that every scene that you have you know it it really makes for an extremely good movie I was very surprised with this film and the thing is in the beginning I was just like hooked in right away because I was like, oh, I like the characters. Like, I like this the stupid banter between Jesus and Maria, right? I, I love the them arguing over the damn coffee table and then meeting the, you know, the little girl that's infatuated with Jesus and then even getting to the point where you meet the brother and the sister and put it in like, I'm just, it's a very small cast. It's very well done. It doesn't feel like, you know, you have, you have an independent feel to this movie, but it's like watching one of the better A24 movies is what I feel like. A24 does really good jobs with who they choose to produce, which films they produce, and have an indie feeling with it not really feeling indie. Have it feeling like, you know, it's a big budget film, but A24 isn't about like the huge budget. And they're kind of about taking a chance with ideas and movies as they are. And this feels like this belongs in that world, right? Uh, and I just like... And again, not all A24 movies hit. Some of them completely miss. Um, and then some of them, it may take some time or repeated viewings for them to hit, I think, for some people. But this is one of the, like, I would consider in that world of A24 where it just hits automatically. I think that, you know, you're going to be left shocked at the end of the movie. Uh, the relief from the tension at the end of the movie is good for you. But the entire time, it's just like how do you get past this? And it's just something that's always lingering in the background that you never really get away from. So uh, overall, I would rate this movie a solid four out of five, uh, you know, blood puppy dogs. Uh, and I will talk about why I'm saying that in the spoiler section that's coming up. But I think that you guys, if you have a chance to go see this, you know, do you need to see this in the theater? I think it would be a good, you know, thing. It is in Spanish, so if you're not too up on reading subtitles, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I still think that it's worth it. I I love foreign language horror movies, and especially when they're foreign language psychological horror, I tend to like them a little better uh, because I feel that sometimes that that's a lot of like the really great like foreign horror movies. There's a lot of good creature features and other things like that, but. I really feel like, especially when it comes to Spanish horror, I think their psychological horror is like uh, the, on a league of its own when it does it. Um, so I, I definitely think that this is something that everybody should see. I'm very surprised that I liked it as much as I did. And I kept wavering for a little while, but the ending of the movie really put it into perspective to give it that four out of five. And it's it just blows my mind. So... If this is where you stop watching the video, thank you so much for watching. Um, and, you know, 
make sure that you, uh, you know, like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. And then uh, we're going to go into spoilers in just a moment. And uh, I guess uh, you guys, I'll catch you all soon, unless you're going to stay around for the spoiler section. All right. Bye, guys. Okay, hey everybody, and welcome to the spoiler section for the movie. Um, like I said before in the review, and I always have a hard time when I talk about movies and try to get my thoughts across without spoiling shit, right? So this is like full-on spoilers. This is for, there's a major thing that happens in this movie. So if you're watching this part and you didn't want to be spoiled, you're going to be spoiled. And, uh, you know, it's... It's crazy. This movie is absolutely insane, and there are going to be a lot of people talking about this movie, and they're going to talk about it because within the first like 15 minutes of the movie, the most shocking thing happens with the table. So like I said, the this couple, they're buying a table, right? They're arguing in the beginning of the movie. The salesman is there, and he's talking to them, and he's just kind of like, you know, this is one of the best tables around. It's Swiss made, but Really, some of the stuff is done from China, but the glass is basically unbreakable, almost unbreakable, right? And the husband, you know, he's a little upset with the wife because the wife has chosen basically everything in their life. Like, she's very, you want to say, like, totalitarian in terms of the way that she handles their relationship. You know, she's chosen where they live. She's been forced to move back into his grandma's place because his grandma died, and they moved over there, and she just had the kid. He didn't even get an opportunity to name the kid. You know, he wasn't ready to have kids yet, but she's like, what, I'm going to be 80 by the time that you want to have kids. We're going to, we, we had kids, so you're just going to have to deal with it. But the thing is, is that he, it's not that he doesn't love his son, because he obviously loves his son, but he, like, I didn't even get to name the boy. And, and it's funny because they do a scene in the beginning. Again, the beginning of this movie is actually pretty funny in the way that does, especially the way that they're bickering and the way that the salesman's trying to get in there and, like, really trying to sell this coffee table, you know. And it's just, it, it's ridiculous. And I'm like, wow, where is this going? But I really like the way that this is done, you know. And then they go back home and, you know, he's got to move it upstairs. And that's where you meet the the neighbor and her daughter. And the daughter's 13 years old, and she is just in love with him. Like, when they're talking to him, and like, oh, what's wrong? Why are you, you know, basically, like, you know, say, oh, hey, meet the baby. Well, you, And she's like, I already met the baby. And she's like, why are you so rude to people? Sometimes, I don't know, she's just teenagers. Teenagers are just crazy in, in the way that they are. You know, she shouldn't be this rude. And, you know, it's like she has a boyfriend, you know, but the boyfriend dumped her or something like that. And she's like, no, it's not that. It's that he's in love with me, but he won't say that he is. You know, he's too cowardly to say that. And so, you know, after they all go away and, you know, the wife goes back in the house with the baby and the mom starts walking off. And the like the whole little thing after the credits is the husband pushing this giant box up there like circular. Well, not really circular, but like. You know, stories of, of stairs where it's very tight stairs to get up. It's like, you know, six, six steps and then a turn and then another six steps and a turn and then another six steps and a turn. So it's very tight to get this giant box through. And he's having to do it all by himself because the wife wants nothing to do with the table and doesn't want to help him. Right. You bought it. You're going to have to figure out how to get it upstairs yourself, bitch. You know. And so he's getting ready to put it in. And that's when the little girl approaches him. And is like, why won't you tell me you love me? Why won't you tell your wife that you're in love with me? And he's like, I'm not in love with you. I'm just helping you out here. And it's a good little conversation, a good little scene that we have there just to like show how obsessive she is. And then how like the husband is just really trying to like, not this. I don't want to deal with this again. And she's like, well, what about when you text me all those lovely texts? And he's like, those were poems that you asked me for. You asked me for love poems for a, a you know, uh, an assignment they're doing, meaning that she's like trying to manipulate him into agreeing to this, you know, infatuation that she has with him. And it's a cute little scene in, in like a way, right? It's a little disturbing, but it's cute in the way that she's doing things and the way that he's handling her. And it's funny. I, I like the way that the scene played out, right? Then the husband goes, you know, into the house and begins constructing the coffee table and he's missing a screw. You know, it's supposed to come with five, but it only came with four. 
you know, and the table's not, it's like wobbly, the glass is on top. It's a glass table with the two stands of the two ladies on the side. The, they argue a little bit more, and, you know, she's like, well, I didn't want the table in the first place. And so he's like, oh, I'm just going to call them. So he calls up the sales store. He gets them to get the screw, to bring the screw to them. He's like, oh, I'm not going to go there. You're going to have to bring it here. You know, I just bought and spent all this money on this stupid table, you know, and basically trying to, you know, prove his wife that, yeah, I, I can do it. I'm a man. I know how to do this stuff, right? I can take control over everything. And see, look, I even got him to come over here and do this. And so she decides, you know what? Your brother's coming with his young girlfriend. And it's funny because she calls a brother, uh, you know, I don't think I can say the word, you know, something file, which is funny because the, you know, that's basically what the little girl is trying to like convince him that he is right to like be with her. Cause she even says to him like, you know, your wife, she's old. I'm young. You can fuck me whenever you want to. And I'm like, Whoa, Hey, you're 13. Like, Shouldn't be saying to that somebody in their 40s, you know, that's not kosher. But it's so jarring and shocking that it's funny. And again, that's part of that, like, dark black comedy that's going on. And I'm like, if it's stuff like this throughout the movie, I think that it's going to work. And I'm just like, what? The whole time, though, I'm wondering, you know, what's the coffee table that's there that's going to cause this turmoil between, you know, Maria and Jesus? You know, what, what, what could it possibly be? So... She decides, Maria decides that she's going to leave the, the house to go shopping to get the food because also the brother of him, of Jesus, has turned vegan because of this young girl that he's dating. And so, you know, he she goes off to the store to go get the stuff, but she has to get like vegetarian stuff as well or vegan stuff as well and leaves him there with a the baby. And once she leaves, the baby starts crying. So he grabs the baby and... And, you know, we see him, like, pace around the house, and he's you know, holding the kid, and he's just like, don't worry, no, you need to, you know, you'll be okay, just stop crying. And then he brings him over to the coffee table, and you don't see what happens. There's a lot of stuff where you don't see, you just see the aftermath of what's going on, and here's what happens with the coffee table, right? And uh, this is, you know, for some, you know, this might be really disturbing in the way that it is, and it is disturbing, but, you know, maybe it's going to, uh, I hate to use the word trigger, but trigger something. So I'm going to warn you uh, of what I'm going to say right now is that it it is really brutal of what happens. You probably have an idea, but it's worse than you could possibly think, and it's really fucked up. And this could be really traumatizing to somebody that is, a, a brand new parent um, or that, you know, has a young kid, and especially with this stuff. So remember, he doesn't have the screw. And he's got the table there, and then what you what you hear is him trying to calm down the baby. And he said, look, don't you like the table? Don't you like the table? Look, the table. The table is great. You know, don't you like the table? The table's good for you. It was meant for you. You know, here, the table. And then all of a sudden you hear the crash of glass and then silence. And I, and I said, no, 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 that's not what happened. No, no, that's not what happened. And it is what happened. And the table, so the assumption is, and I don't know exactly what it is, because he wasn't, it's not like he got frustrated. Like, what I was really worried was going to happen. He's going to get, like, super frustrated. Because he says he's sitting on the table. It's more like to get him, you know, like, to calm down. And, oh, look, look at this. And, like, in my mind, I think he's, like, holding the baby here and, like, looking down at it and showing it. But what he most likely did was he put the baby on the glass table when it wasn't secure yet. And then the glass shattered. And when the glass shattered, it completely severed the baby's head from its body and crashed onto the floor, where the baby's body landed on the floor, blood covering everything, covering the new coffee table, covering their carpet that they have there. But the head rolls underneath a chair. And you don't really see the head. You do get a momentary glance at it. And I'm glad that they didn't do anything up close. And you never really see an up close thing that you see at one point that they do grab something small and red and round, but you never see th that specifically. So they don't go like super into the gore for it or to be really shocking. It's still shocking for what it is, but I'm very surprised that that's where this went, right? He just is shocked and he's basically just sitting there for a while. And this is... This is where, one, the conflict comes in the movie, and two, where I say things last a little longer on scenes than it should, because 
it stays on him basically in shock for quite some time. It feels like an eternity, but it's not really that much of an eternity. So he's basically freaking out, right? And he ends up, you know, having to he he ends up having to cover it up, right? And meanwhile, she's in the store and she's going to be coming back and he goes to the, you know, neighbors to go get some bleach and stuff to try to clean the carpet up. He puts the baby's body in the crib. And then he tries to clean all the stuff up before she comes home and before her brother, his brother, and his new girlfriend come to the house, right? And that is the overlying tension that lasts throughout the movie is how does he deal with every situation? Because, like, he gets a phone call from her at one point and a friend they haven't seen in forever who recently got a divorce and has their kid. And the thing is, is with with Maria, the child is her number one love, right? Because... And it's the one thing that she wanted the most in the world was to have kids and have a kid. And now she does. And Jesus, the thing is that he's like, he's taken that away from her, not on purpose. Right. Which I'm glad that they didn't do anything like that. I'm glad that, you know, and it's, this is, this again, this is like the black comedy nature of this, not to be ha ha funny, but it's funny that it's saying, I'm glad that that at least if they killed the baby, it, the baby died on X, right? I'm not, he shouldn't have killed the baby at all, but that's where it is. There's a great scene where the guy you know, from the, the salesman from the store shows up. That's, it's really fucking funny. Uh, it's ridiculously funny, but the, the tension of everything that's there because he meets him after he gets the bleach and he's standing outside with the thing. And he's like, oh, I'm going to make it up to you. Um, I brought this thing. We're having a, a con contest for a lamp inside the store. And if you just fill this out right now and the dude's like, you know, he's sullen. He's just like, I just really need you to leave. I thank you for the screw. Please leave because he needs to go in there and clean and he's really fucked up in the head at the same time, right? Because he just killed his fucking son. But here's the guy. Oh, if you just do it and wink, wink, you know, if you fill this out and I put it in, somebody's going to win a lamp, you know, and then he starts going into the, you know, I think there's a connection between you and I. I, I really felt something that, you know, we could be, I don't have a whole lot of friends and I don't do a lot of things on the outside. So if you like to go have lunch sometime, that'd be great. I'd really love it. And he's just like, he lean, grabs down and grabs the fucking cleaners. And he starts. Well, it's like those things are in there and they're funny, but there's this overlying tragedy that's there because how is he going to tell his wife that he accidentally killed the baby because of the, the broken glass? And then when she finally shows up, he basically hides it from her because he doesn't know how to tell her. And like, it's one of those situations that, you know, he doesn't, he's going to, he has to break her heart. And he's trying to figure out a way out of it. And at one point, before she even gets there, he looks like he's going to jump off the roof and go kill himself. And, you know, if he's going to do that, you know, how is he going to say anything to her? But all of a sudden, you know, she does come back to the house. And then he just says, you know, she goes, what happened? He's like, you're not going to believe it. The glass broke. And then she's joking with him because she realizes the argument over the table is stupid while she's out shopping. And all that really matters is that they're together and their son is with them. And that's the more important thing than a stupid table that doesn't match anything that she doesn't want and she doesn't like. That's her thing. But the, but the thing is, you know, she never knows that the son is dead. And the reason the son is dead is because of the table. And so when she finds that the glass is broken from the table and though, and he injured himself is what he's saying. He's like, Oh, I cut myself. And he shows his hand cause he's bandaged it up after he's taken a shower to get all the blood and stuff off of him. And then she keeps cracking jokes about the table and like kind of ribbing him. Oh my God. See, Oh, that's karma for you. That's your karma. The table, you know, broke because you want to get that table so bad. Oh, unbreakable glass. And look what it did to you. Ha 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 ha. Not knowing that it killed her son. Like those are the things that just go in there and can just fuck you up really bad. Right. And it just continues. And then it continues when the brother comes over. And the brother and the, the girlfriend want to go see the kid. And he's trying to find ways. And there's there's cool little scenes where, like, in the beginning, like, he the, he doesn't get Maria to go back there. Because she's like, well, I have to, you know, breastfeed him at some point. And he's like, well, I just barely got him to sleep. So if you could just, you know, let him sleep, it'd be great. You know? And she's like, oh, yeah, we'll get the baby monitor so we can, if he starts crying, then at least we can, you know, we can go see him. And then they're in the kitchen preparing the lunch. 
and all of a sudden the drips of blood from the baby's body start resonating into the baby monitor and he starts freaking out and he has to go back there and cover that up so that she can go and prepare the lunch for you know the brother and the the new girlfriend and so you know it's it seems like that, like that starts with the next thing with the baby and the next two times we see the baby monitor, he starts hallucinating noises that are coming from the baby monitor, which are extremely effective. But there are a lot of long shots on on him and on the rest of them. And it's like everybody around him is so happy, but they don't understand why he is so stoic and upset, but he doesn't tell anybody anything because he can't. And eventually there is a very awkward, and, and this is probably my favorite shot in the movie, this favorite little scene that happens. They're all sitting down at the table and they're all eating. And he is just going more and more into his mind. And everybody's like eating and they show everything like close up of their face. And they're, you know, they're eating the Spanish omelet. And she's, the girlfriend's talking about, oh, how vegan it's much better for you. And the brother is just like, yeah, I don't, didn't really want to. But she said I couldn't be with her anymore unless I was vegan. So here I am. I'm vegan now. And then he's got, he's like, oh, no, I'm not really that hungry. But then he starts to eat like a berry pie, like a boysenberry pie. And as he eats it, you know, it the color is the same color of blood is basically what it looks like, right? But it's, it doesn't start out that way, but it kind of turns into that. And then when he, especially when he takes a, a like the piece of it off, the, the plate that's there, and underneath it, it's darker. It's like a more redder pie than it needs to be. And then he puts it in his mouth. And as he's doing it, then all of the, the blood just starts pouring out of his mouth and pouring onto the plate. But when they cut real fast, and that's you find it's all just kind of in his head, and he's just eating the pie, you know, it's there. And that's when the brother announces that, you know, his girlfriend is pregnant. And, you know, Maria is very happy. Oh, my God. Because the girl's asking all these questions. What's it like to be a mom? How was it to go through the pregnancy and do all this stuff? And yada, yada, yada. And then all of a sudden you find out that she's pregnant. And Maria, who is you know talking shit about them, is acting like, oh, she's oh so happy. Oh, I can't believe it. And the brother's all excited. He's all, oh, because your son's now going to have a cousin that will grow up with him. Isn't that going to be great? And you're just like, oh, God, make it stop. Because the the whole tension with, you know, in Jesus's internal struggle with having to deal with the fact that he's killed his son and still try to remain normal with every other person that's around him at this moment is just mind shattering in the way that you do it and how much you have to get to that point and past that point and understand what's going on in, in the relationship. It's it's just done so well and you know, it really makes me appreciate the Jesus character because, you know, ultimately, you know, he had borrowed the stuff from the people upstairs to clean the carpet. And the little girl, you know, she goes and says that, you know, I'm going to come by this afternoon to pick it up and basically says, if you haven't told that your wife that you're leaving with me, then I'm going to tell her everything. And so while, you know, he goes to the bathroom because he can't handle it and he tells his brother off basically like, look, you know, you made a mistake with your life and having her and you, you've ruined hers because now she's going to have a kid your kid and you're too old to be having a kid with her and she's too young to be having she's only 18 she shouldn't be having a kid right now type of thing and then he goes in the bathroom and he makes a video for maria right which is powerful because he's basically saying i'm sorry i didn't know how to tell you and if you found this i've killed myself and you know please don't blame yourself it's all my fault and don't do anything to yourself and so you know you this is and this is the like the whole thing this is the climax of the movie and this is where my jaw just drops because you you have them all together and eventually the brother he ends up talking to the you know the 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 other brother you know to Jesus and cuz he finds him in the bathroom recording the video and he's like who's that video for and Jesus comes clean to him and shows the body and even the brother's like his head is completely gone where's the head and he's all it's in the living room under the chair you know, they have like, um, it's not an ottoman. I don't know what that type of like resting chair is. It's like, a, you know, I don't know. It's like an end chair or something like that. And so it's one, you know, it's like a big chair. And it's got a bottom. It's got these ruffles and there's like blood on it. And he's like, oh, that's my blood. And he's trying to get in there. So while they're trying to deal with how to tell Maria so that she doesn't explode, you know, he's like, because she can't see a headless baby over here and she can't find the head. So, you know, we'll have, you know, my girl take your wife out and we'll deal with everything, but we're going to tell her before we do that. So, you know, 
she goes to the door because the little girl is showing up to pick up her man and, you know, to tell the wife exactly what, you know, if he didn't tell her, then he, she's going to be the one. And then she makes up a lie about kissing her husband, which gets the little girl inside the house with her little dog. The The ultimate thing that happens is that they get to the, the room and she's like, Jesus, she's got something to tell you. Why don't you tell me what's been going on? Because she's got something to tell us. And then he's like, he looks around and, and he's just distraught, not thinking about what it is. And so the brother steps up and he's like, let me tell you, you know, why don't you take her outside and I'll explain it in a second. We got to get this stuff done. And then all of a sudden the dog is playing around the chair. And then what does the dog do? Well, I'm like, no, I even, I said it out loud when it happened. I'm like, no, 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 they're not going to do that. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not good. I'm like, and I'm thinking of all the things could possibly happen. This like, are they going to like go after each other? And then all of a sudden, like have the dog disappear. Like maybe like it goes under there and it grabs it and it runs to the back room and they chase it down. And then they see the dog with the baby's head and they blame it on the dog. Oh my God, the dog killed it. And then that like breaks him free of the guilt and stuff like that. Like he can go through with it and he's just gonna have to deal with it. But at least she's not, you know, she's going to be tragic, but he can help her get through it. Even though, you know, you'd have to hide that forever. That'd be a pretty fucked up ending too. But it might be an ending that they do. But instead, the dog does go underneath there. It does pull out the baby head. And that's where they, you know, the brother comes over and grabs it and tries to hide it from Maria and say, I, you know, you need to go outside. I, I, I will tell you what happened in a second. But you shouldn't see this. You shouldn't see this. And she's begging to see it. And she's crying. She's running over him. And so he ends up opening up his hands and showing the head. You don't see it, but she does. And she goes and she grabs it from him. And then she's just like crying. And that's when my jaw dropped was when they did that. I just could not believe that that's where like they're going with it. And that causes Maria too to jump out the window and kill herself. Right. And it's, I think that's an effective scene in the way that it's done because they start with her as she's walking to the window and then they pan to everybody that's in the room because remember the 13 year old's there. So the 13 year old witness witnesses the baby's head, the, the new mom, the soon to be new mom, she's thrown up everywhere and she's like just filled with like stress. And she's basically catatonic at that point for the shit that she just saw. Then you go to Jesus who's got his head in his hands. You get a focus on the brother who's just staring at his hands that are covered in blood from the baby's head. That was just in his hands. The dog's got blood all over its face. So it's a nice little bloody puppy that you've got there. And then it goes back to the window and Maria's gone. It's, it's a good scene. And you know, when you go after that happens, you go outside and you find out that the husband jumped as well. And they're trying to figure out if it's a murder suicide, you know, where they found the baby decapitated. And then, you know, you have both mom and dad that jumped out the window and killed themselves. Um, and she killed herself because she couldn't deal with the fact that her son's dead and he couldn't deal with the fact that he killed his son. And it's just, it's really powerful. Like I said, the entire time up until that point, it's nothing but tension. It's nothing but how does Jesus deal with the fact that he's done something horrible that was an accident, right? And how does he tell Maria? And he just keeps trying to find a way and find time, but he can't because he's got all these things that he has to do. And it's like he just wants to get past it to the point that he's like, I can't just tell her because it's going to kill her and I'm just going to kill myself, but I'll leave her this message. And it's just how everything works. And the black comedy comes from the stuff that, you know, you shouldn't be laughing at, but you do. And you shouldn't be having these these joyous moments of learning about the new kid. And especially like Jesus is everything that the audience is feeling at that moment. It's a well-written movie. It's well-directed. There's a couple of times where I'm just like, okay, you know, I don't understand that shot. I'm not sure what you're trying to do, but everything just draws you in so tight into different spaces of the movie that you just, you can't get out of it just like Jesus can't get out of it. Right. And so you're just kind of stuck in there. So I, I really did enjoy this movie. It is really fucked up. The, the comedy just comes from not things that are funny, but that, like I said, that church laugh that you get when something happens, but I was truly shocked by the, the beginning of the movie. And I was truly shocked at the end of the movie. And uh, if anything in the spoiler section makes you want to watch it just to see these things unfold, I say do it, but you got to be prepared for it. And you really need to prepare yourself for the fact that, you know, 
baby dies about 15 minutes away in uh, to the movie. So, but that's that's it. I, again, I'd recommend it. I give it a four out of five. I think that it's a good movie. I think that it's really powerful. And um, I thank Scott for you know thinking of me to uh, screen this movie. And if you get yourself a chance to watch it by Friday, go watch it. It's fucking great. Uh, it just it's heavy. And just the entire time, like I would say that there was a little bit of a slow part to it and when I was trying to figure things out, but the tension just never lets up. So, you know, if you can find it out in a theater, go watch it. If not, um, I'm sure it's going to be on VOD relatively soon. So April 19th is when it releases and make sure that you check it all out. So make sure that also there's a new episode. Terrible Terror podcast is available for you as of this, you know, recording for this video. Uh, it was on the fly, the remake, so go check that one out. And then I'm going to be delving back into sequels soon, so you can check those out. Those are available on all podcast platforms. I would have really actually enjoyed to do this as a podcast versus just the video review, but the fact that it's in Spanish makes it really, really hard because there's not a lot of people that speak Spanish that would be listening to my podcast, and I'd have to go through and be like, this is what they said, you know, not just the normal ways that I do things. So also uh, come check me out over on Twitch. I'm always there right now, Monday through Friday. You can come by. I'll have a stream at some point, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursday nights, Wednesdays, and Fridays in the afternoon, all Pacific Standard Time. Come by, say hi, you know, check everything out, and uh, talk some more. If you've seen this, I want to know your opinions in the comments below. So please excuse the dogs for coughing in the background. So, uh, all right. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you very much, and uh, make sure that you take care of yourself and each other, and... Bye, guys.